Close your eyes. Watch your breath. Feel your breath. When you breathe in, where do you feel the breathing process in the body? It's not just the air coming in and out through the nose. It's the movement of the, the chest, the movement of the abdomen. Does it feel calm? Does it feel smooth? If not, what's holding it up, what making it tense? Try to relax wherever the tension is so the breath can be smooth inside. And if you're going to talk to yourself about anything, talk to yourself about the breath. This is the way you talk to yourself inside. It has a big impact in, on shaping your state of mind right now, and it's going to have an impact on how you talk to other people. We all think that meditation is a matter of not thinking, but it's not the case. You do have to think your way to get the mind to be still. And you have to learn how to talk to yourself in a way that's encouraging. When the Buddha would give meditation instructions, part of the talk would be instructions, and part of it would be, as I said, urging, encouraging, and rousing, making you want to do this, making you want to practice. Realizing it's something you can do and you will benefit from it. To learn how to talk to yourself in that way, in the ways that get in the way of developing the goodness of the mind. You can just put those ideas aside. The Buddha talks about ways in which you create harmony in the group outside, but it also plays a role in creating harmony inside. There are four characteristics altogether. The first one is generosity. The second is kind words. The third is genuine help. And the fourth is appropriate treatment of the other person. In terms of generosity, you give what you can. If you don't have material things to give, you can give of your time, you can give of your energy. If you don't have much energy, you can give your goodwill. There are lots of good things you can put out into the world. So think about the good things that you can contribute, because that then lifts the state of your mind. As for kind words, when you're talking to somebody else, if you have reason to criticize them, you try to do it in a way that shows that you still have respect for the other person. If you show any contempt, that's going to destroy the relationship. And as for genuine help, when you're helping somebody else, you don't do it just to show or to make points that you can then call back. You ask yourself, well, what does this person really need? What would this person really appreciate? And if you can do, provide for those needs, you can go ahead and do that. And then finally, this appropriate treatment. In other words, you, know, you, you treat your mother as a mother should be treated, you treat your father as a father should be treated, and so on around you. Well, the same principles apply inside. You're generous with your time for yourself. The mind needs some time to be by itself and not take, take on the affairs of the world. Otherwise, it gets run ragged. So you set aside some time to just let the mind have some time by itself, to look at itself, to understand itself, and to nourish itself inside. As for kind words, you encourage yourself as you practice. The Buddha says if you show any contempt for yourself, in other words, tell yourself that you can't do this, that gets in the way of gaining, really gaining the benefits that the Dharma has to offer. Genuine help. Okay, you realize that the things you need most right now are qualities of the mind. You try to depend on the body, but the body do what you want for the time being. But after a while, it stops doing what you want and starts doing the things you don't want. You don't want it to age, but it's going to age. You don't want it to get sick, but it sometimes gets sick. You don't want it to die, but someday it's going to die. So you can't really depend on the body. You've got to give the mind something it can depend on inside, right? Developing good qualities this is what the mind really needs more than anything else. Like right now, you're developing mindfulness, the ability to keep something in mind. Alertness, the ability to know what you're doing while you're doing it. And then ardency, the desire to do it well. These things really give you genuine help. And as for appropriate treatment, okay, remember, the mind is the number one possession you have. The things of the world come and they go, but your mind is always going to be with you. So give it the attention that it deserves. And that way you find that you benefit inside and then the benefits go outside as well.
So if you keep in mind these principles for harmony, both the inside and outside, then even though the world is a place of turmoil, you create a little island in, that, in the midst of that turmoil, where you can find some peace and you can give some peace to others. You find harmony inside, and you create a harmonious world around you. That's an excellent gift.